you know how to. Thank you. What can we say in a night like this? In a blessed night like this, five years ago, Allah, in his wisdom, decided to call one of his most beloved ones to his presence. And he has left us to continue what he had started. What did he start? We may say he started a dergah. We may say he started a masjid. We may say he started this village, this community. But all of that although it is not easy to do that all of that still is just buildings and land He has left us something more precious than that He has left us with faith. Faith. We all know how our faith was before we met our Shaykh. And just looking at a friend of Allah Yes, looking. Your faith increases. At least for me it did. Just to sit in his presence, your faith increases. And you are reminded of Allah. He didn't have to say anything yet. He didn't have to do anything. You're just sitting. It is as if he had the secret of your faith, my faith, in his hands. And he's holding it. And if you are looking for that faith, you find him and he will give. And it is that faith that is sustaining us and keeping us now. It is not this building. It is not even this community. If you have everything, but you don't have that faith, it's empty. One day you're going to get bored, like some people they did, because there was not enough faith. Faith. Is believing and trusting sincerely things you understand and things that you don't understand. It is giving your trust. It is being patient. And it is sitting and trying to understand. The one who judges, he can never have faith. We've seen that as well during Shaf and his time and after. The one who sits and judges the community or the Derga or the way, the faith is not going to stay. If they had faith, it's not going to stay. Doubt is going to enter. Negativity is going to enter then pretty soon everything that he has taught us to have the intelligence to think and to understand to know what is logical and to find the proof for that is gone modesty 
that comes with the faith is gone. There's no more modesty, there's no more adab. Oh, that time. You will sit and you will judge and you will slander. We will continue. Some years have passed. And every day we're wishing for Shah Andy to return. This is not what I said, this is what Shah Maulana is saying. We're waiting for the Sahibu Zaman to come. We are in the end of the end of days. We are preparing ourselves for that big uh, war that is going to happen between Haq and Batil. And our time spent here is understanding what is Haq, to put it in our heart and to live it. Haq will have enemies. Haq will always have Batil to have enemies. Haq will always be slandered. Shaitan will not leave Haq alone. Our responsibility as his murids is to make our connection to him stronger. When there is no submission, when there is no intelligence, there is no modesty and there is no faith, you can have these buildings, you can have the land, you can have the form, you can have the zikr, you can have everything. But it's empty. It's empty. Because the most important thing is that one who is giving us that faith. You've already broken the connection. I question myself every day. We must question ourselves every day. This doesn't belong to us. This doesn't belong to me. It doesn't belong to you. He has left us with that faith and with that faith, everything else that is connected to continue. That is our work. You sit with him long enough, you understand that he does not train murids to have any ambition or any desire, not for dunya, not for ahirat. Whatever that is given to you or to me, it is a responsibility and it is an order. Doesn't matter what people say. I was speaking earlier today. When you inherit the way, you're not just inheriting building or land. You're not just inheriting the Jamaat. If you're inheriting the way, if you're following in the footsteps, as Holy Prophet is saying, when the man says, I love you, Ya Rasulullah, and he says, prepare yourself for hardship. If you're inheriting that way, if you're walking in that footstep, you will also inherit some of that hardship. We're not asking for it. We cannot carry what he carried. And I was just thinking about the hardship that Sheriff Andy carried. All the fitna that he had to endure, same thing with all saints, same things with the Holy Prophet He's still being slandered 1400 years later. Never stopping. So don't think it's going to stop for us. He's always saying, dogs they may bark, but the caravan must continue. And we continue. With or without me, it will continue. With or without you, it will continue. We are not irreplaceable. At the same time, if you are here, if we are occupying a space here, it is an honor and it is a responsibility. Our forehead is clear. What we're doing is open. And what Shah Effendi did and what he had to go through and experience. We are experiencing these days. After five years, 
Who knows what's going to happen in seven years if Allah gives us life? Who knows what's going to happen in 11 years if Allah gives us life? We're walking in his footsteps, we're going to inherit some of that experience that he had to go through. But that experience is going to make your faith to come stronger. Don't let go. Don't let go. Hold on strongly to our shaykh. Hold on strongly to each other. Hold on strongly when the winds, they're coming to knock you side to side. Hold on strongly when maybe it is necessary for you to be knocked from wall to wall. Hold on strongly. Because we're not doing this for our benefit. How much thanks we can give to our Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for making us to be in this way. We cannot thank him enough, and we cannot thank our Prophet, alayhi sallallahu wa sallam, enough. We must run to do good things, stay away from the wrong things. And all the confusion and all the fitna, alhamdulillah, it is happening to us in these holy months, where even the mushriks in the jahiliya time, they stop themselves from fighting. Alhamdulillah, we are getting attacked. But we're not saying one word. We are just being patient because this way has an owner. It's not me, it's not you. <laughs> it is our shay. The owner is going to protect it. Just like when the elephants came to Mecca, Abraha came with all the elephants to destroy Mecca, to destroy the Kaaba. And who? Grandfather. Hazrat Abdul Muttalib. He did not raise an army. He did not try to fight. He told the people, go and find protection. He went straight to that general, Abraha, and he said, what? Give me back my camels that you took. He says, you are the ruler of this city. You're not asking for the city. You're asking for your camels. He says, yes, because the camels belong to me. The city belongs to Allah. Allah is going to protect. And those elephants of Abraha, Allah did not send another elephant or team of elephants to destroy. He sent birds of Abil. Nimrud. He is a big Zalim. The enemy of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam, which in today's world there are a lot of enemies of Hazrat Ibrahim, but they are Muslims. They look like they are the best scholars. You see, we become worse than Nimrud. With that Zalim Nimrud, who was so powerful that he was ruling this whole world, Allah brought him down with one mosquito. One mosquito. Destroyed him. Mosquitoes destroyed his army. Allah did not send another army. Allah did not even send angels down, you understand? And with Firaun, Allah destroyed him with one cane, with one stick. There are a lot of Firauns and Nimruds in these days. And Allah's punishment, it is sure, it is certain. We must pull ourselves back from any confusion. Watch our manners in this month, few days before the Barat. Keep ourselves clean and patient. There is the owner of this way. Maybe they're going to send something. Maybe they're not going to send something. It's not our business. 
Our business is what is our responsibility. And we're protecting that. And we're continuing. Who knows what Allah is going to send. Oh, in today's Firaun's, Allah sent virus that you cannot even see or hear that destroying mankind. We are fearing from the azab of Allah. We fear Allah. And may Allah forgive us. Amen. And may Allah send more help Amen. to the ones who are sent standing for haq, inshallah. And may Allah make us to become strong, Amen. to bring down the batil. And may Allah forgive us, bless our Grand Sheikh and our Sheikh, inshallah, Rahman. Because we only know our Grand Sheikh through our Sheikh. We do not know our Grand Sheikh through any other way. We are only in this way because of our Sheikh who connects us to Grand Sheikh. We are following him. We are not following Sheikh Maulana directly. Shri Maulana is Sultan, those who are following him directly, they are his wazirs. Our Shaykh is Khalifa, following him. We, we are just following his Khalifa and we are continuing, inshallah. Anybody who likes, they are welcome. Anybody who is not liking, gitane gula gula. We are not here to make fitna, to fight with anyone. As Shaykh Effendi was, just quietly doing his thing while the whole world was attacking him. Yeah, alhamdulillah, we are seeing step by step, it's coming true for us too. We want to continue our way. We want everyone to be united under Haq. We want everyone to be united under this way, the Naqshbandi way. And our unity with the Naqshbandi way it is through our Shaykh Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kabrisi al Rabbani, the Shaykh Maulana. And we have no problems with anyone who is following in this way. We have no problems with anyone. And we respect those ones who are succeeding him and representing him. And we have our own job. We must be busy with that. Those who are busy with fitna, they don't have work to do. That's why they're very busy with that. May Allah always keep us busy with the work of Allah, inshallah. May Allah forgive me and bless you. Al Fatiha. Amin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This much is enough. Amin. Yeah.